Today I'm going to be quickly showing you guys how you can take the video quality of your live streams from looking blurry, blotchy, and choppy to crystal clear, thus improving the viewing experience for your audience. And to do this, we're going to be using OBS Studio to implement these best practice settings. So the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to the right hand side and access our settings, go to the video tab, and within here you're going to want to set the base and output canvas resolutions. The standard quality that you'll typically see on platforms such as YouTube and Twitch is going to be 1080p 60. So right now my base canvas is 1920 by 1080, but our output is at 720p and we want to adjust this to be at 1080p quality. As for the common FPS value, the standard is 60 FPS. So we're going to want to change that from 30 to 60. Once that's good to go, let's select apply and OK. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is add our gameplay source. So I'm going to do that within my sources by going to the plus button here, then adding a video capture device source. I'm just going to call it capture card, select OK. And within here, we're going to select the device drop down and choose the capture card connected to our computer. For me, I'm using the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K 2.1. Since I have everything connected correctly, it just popped right up. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is head over down here to the resolution and FPS type. Let's select this drop down and instead of using the device default, let's change that to custom. And then under that, you're going to see the resolution drop down. So we're going to choose that as well. Now, if you happen to be playing your game in 4K quality and you are passing that through your capture card, I would go ahead and select the 4K option here. And the reason for this is because you'll get a better image quality if you set it to 4K rather than 1080p. But let's say your computer can't handle processing 4K, then instead I would just knock it down to 1920 by 1080, which will still look great. After that, you're going to want to set your FPS value to 60. OBS, why, why is this showing up over here? What, whatever. <laughs> Video format, you can keep at any. Color space, you can do Rec 709. And then color range, you want to have that to be full. Once that's done, go ahead and select OK. And now the next thing we're going to want to do is modify our actual stream settings. So to do that, we're going to want to go back over to our settings, then go to the output tab. And from here, instead of being in the simple output mode, we're going to want to select that drop down and choose the advanced option. Now, Staying within the streaming tab here, audio track, you can keep that as is, audio encoder is fine, VOD track is fine, the video encoder is one of the most important parts you're going to want to pay attention to. So right now, mine is set to X264, which means it's leveraging the CPU, or also known as the processor on my computer. You'll want to keep this option selected if you don't have a dedicated graphics card, such as one from NVIDIA or AMD. In my case, I do have an NVIDIA RTX 5070 series graphics card. So in my case, I'm going to want to select the NVIDIA NVEC H.264 for my video encoder. For those of you guys that are using an M1, M2, M3, M4 silicon based chip Mac, then you're going to want to select the Apple VT hardware encoder. From there, we can head over down to our encoder settings. The rate control, we're going to want to have that at CBR or constant bit rate. The bit rate itself, you're going to want to set that to 6000 if you're on Twitch. But if you're streaming to a platform like YouTube that doesn't have a cap on how much bit rate you can push out, then I would put this up to 10,000 kilobits per second as your video quality will look much nicer compared to using a lower bit rate. As for the keyframe interval, you're going to want to set this to two so that your viewers have a better playback experience. Presets, you can keep those as is with the exception of the multi-pass mode drop down I would set that to full resolution. Profile can remain high, look ahead, and adaptive quantization should be checked off and B-frame should be too. Once you have that complete, go ahead and select apply and OK. Go ahead and launch your stream with your new updated settings and let me know in the comment section below how your quality is looking. Now, as a bonus tip, if you are running to any network issues with your stream, then go back to your bitrate setting and keep reducing it by intervals of 500 until your issue is gone. It would even help to do a internet speed test to see where you're coming in at as that will help you to adjust this number more precisely. All right, that's it. Told you it was going to be a quick one. Peace.